Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come back with that second video just to make you think. And I have two clips. I have one about fertility. China trying to buy the American fertility. And then also we have Mark Cuban. Now the spin on it that they do on this fertility is out of this world. Basically they said China wants and they can create a bioweapon because they know your DNA. And then of course... We have Mark Cuban talking about business as far as with China. Now, guys, we know about Operation Paperclip. You had the greatest minds, the greatest scientists during Hitler. So, guys, this has not gone anywhere. And believe me, when it comes to DNA, they're already making viruses and diseases for our DNA. They just want to blame it on China. That's all this is about. Same thing with the C word. We know our military was... They're doing the outbreak of the C word. So guys, make sure we keep our eyes wide open. When it comes to business in China, we're going to hear Mark Cuban. But guys, we know that the Rockefellers are building a $10 billion facility in China. We know American Express is in China. MasterCard is in China. JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, American Express. So, guys, we know all the banks move wherever the money is at. They know that as billions of people over in China, India, Africa, the emerging markets are going to take over. So, guys, remember I repeat, if you have a business, design it for the emerging markets, guys. They have destroyed the United States middle class with the C word. We know China only had the C word for maybe two weeks, and that's all we should have had. So guys, make sure that you are getting yourself prepared, but y'all have a wonderful day. Right, CNBC has learned that the U.S. government has used a secretive process to block a Chinese company from acquiring an American fertility clinic. But why would they do that? To find out, we went to the Department of Justice for answers. John Demers heads the National Security Division of the Department of Justice, making him one of the country's top spy hunters. Your genetic material, your biological material is among the most intimate information about you, who you are, what your vulnerabilities may be, what your illnesses have been in the past, what your family medical history is, etc. And again, that can be used from a counterintelligence perspective to either coerce you or convince you to help uh, the Chinese. Our investigation has found four of the roughly dozen fertility clinics in the San Diego area have investors with links to China. Fertility treatments are hugely popular in China after the repeal of the one child policy there. And Chinese customers have flocked to American clinics, which are seen as among the best in the world. Take the case of HRC Fertility in California. One of its offices is in Oceanside, just a 14-minute drive from the front gate of Camp Pendleton. There's no way to tell from its offices or website, but the fertility clinic's ownership history is global and extremely convoluted. In 2017, management rights to HRC Fertility were purchased by an investment entity in the British Virgin Islands that was in turn owned by a Chinese coal company. Later, a new entity took the company public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So why would a Chinese coal company want to buy a U.S. fertility clinic in the first place? HRC tells us the coal mining subsidiary was merely a convenient investment vehicle. And the company says it's engaged in significant restructuring to allay China-related concerns, including keeping all U.S. patient data on servers inside the United States. And as for the clinic being located near a U.S. military base, the company calls that a meaningless coincidence. But it's the kind of transaction that can be concerning to the U.S. government. So what if you saw a subsidiary of a Chinese mining company buying an American fertility chain? Would that be a red flag to you? Well, without obviously commenting on any individual transaction, that's the kind of dissonance that would be very interested to us. In a statement, HRC told us in part, the company complies with all relevant federal and state laws and regulations regarding patient data security. We take patient information and data security seriously and do not share any patient information with our parent company. In fact, we go beyond the requirements and use third-party experts to confirm the security of our patient data on a regular basis.
It's a big global economy. Why should we say there's anything wrong with the Chinese buying American companies? Well, what we're worried about is the use that they make of the data. If all they were doing was then running that company as a going concern and earning the profits from it, that would be fine. What could they do with it? Demers says there are some terrifying possibilities. The worst case would be, and I'm not saying that we've seen this, but the worst case would be the development of some kind of biological weapon. Really? If you had all of the data of a population, you might be able to see what that population is most vulnerable to. Mira Ricardel, the former deputy national security advisor, told CNBC CFIUS, the highly secretive Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, located in the Treasury Department, has already taken action. Has the federal government ever blocked the acquisition of a fertility clinic in the United States by the Chinese? I, I believe they have. Again, these are not things that are reported. It's a confidential process, but I understand there's been at least one case. And guys, CFIUS does have the authority under U.S. law to actually force American companies to be divested of their ownership if they think that there's a national security problem there. There's no indication, though, that that's happening right now with any of these Chinese-linked fertility clinics inside the United States. Now a look at a moment when national security interests trumped ethical concerns. Jeffrey Brown has our book conversation. Nazi scientists, some of them tied to war crimes, including horrific concentration camp experiments, brought to the U.S. in a secret program to advance American security interests during the Cold War. It sounds like the plot of a film drama, but it actually happened, and on a large scale. The story is told in the new book, Operation Paperclip. Author and journalist Annie Jacobson joins us now. Welcome to you. Thank you. So these were top scientists in the German war effort sought out by the U.S. military in, as the war was coming to an end. That's right. These were Hitler's top weapons makers. And Operation Paperclip became a classified military program to bring them to the United States. It also had a public face. So there was, on the one hand, the truth about the program kept secret, and on the other hand, the idea that will tell the, the public that these are the good Germans. And, uh, the good Germans, but they were dedicated Nazis, mm -hmm. the ones you write about. Uh, we should say there, there are many, 1,600 in, in yes. all, right? Yes, You document about 21 of them, dedicated Nazis, some, as I said, involved in horrific stuff. What they did was known, right, to the people who were, to the Americans who were seeking them out. Certainly to the American military intelligence officers mm -hmm. who were interviewing them. The idea that they were involved in war crimes was really n necessary to be kept secret, and that's exactly what happened. And so in the book, I think I unveil a lot of the truth about this program that has remained clouded for decades. So give us an example of one of, of, one of the figures that intrigued you. Well, I think one of the worst case scenarios was that the United States military made the decision to bring J Walter Schreiber. This was Major General Dr. Walter Schreiber, the Surgeon General of the Third Reich. He wound up at a military facility in Texas. And doing what? Well, in, during the war, Dr. Schreiber had been involved in uh, the vaccine program for the Reich, which sounds like a nice program, but it was actually a program to uh, work on protecting German soldiers from these biological weapons that were also being manufactured. So he was involved in war crimes and concentration camps. He became a prisoner of the Soviets and then defected to the United States, we saw him as someone who we absolutely wanted here for his knowledge. So in the United States, it still remains unknown what exactly he did, only that he worked for the U.S. Air Force in Texas. You know, this becomes, of course, a story of, of practical versus ethical choices, right? To whether to decisions made, whether to look the other way or forget about the past mm -hmm. in order to advance and gain advantage over the Soviets, it should, should be said, during the Cold War. Absolutely. I mean, the Cold War got hot very quickly, mm -hmm. and the Soviet threat was this foreboding menace. And the idea was, certainly at the Pentagon and among the Joint Chiefs of Staff who were really running this program, was if we don't get these Nazi scientists, surely the Soviets will. Was there much debate at the time about, about the ethics of it? Absolutely, there was a debate. And I mm -hmm. think that's what makes the narrative so compelling, because mm -hmm. you have some people 
including high-ranking generals at the Pentagon who are loath to work with Hitler's former scientists. Mm -hmm. And you have others who say, this must be done and it will be done. You said we, we don't really know much about uh, the case of Walter Schreiber, what he did. Mm -hmm. Some of them we do know, right? And the very famous case is, uh, most famous is R R Werner von Braun. Yes, he came here. He was the head of our rocket program and brought 114 fellow V2 rocket makers with him. And this program, again, had a very beneficent face. Um, only now do we know the facts are very different about what those scientists were involved in at the end of the war in what was called the Nordhausen slave labor factory, uh, deep in the tunnels that you had concentration camp pris prisoners building the V2 rockets. So in a case like that and others where we know that they, they did, ac they did accomplish things mm -hmm. for the U.S. when they came here. Then the question, and you write this, does accomplishment cancel mm -hmm. out past crimes? That, I think, is the conundrum of Operation Paperclip. Mm -hmm. And I hope that people come to the, their own conclusion about that, because certainly uh, the idea that you would excuse some of this horrific, horrific behavior during the war becomes, uh, you know, that big moral question. And what, and what happened to these guys in the end? A number of mm -hmm. them just lived out their days quite well here in the U.S. You know, the obituary for Dr. Theodore Benziger in the New York Times, I think, kind of sums it up. He died in 1999, and the New York Times louds him as a, a, a good German scientist who's dedicated his life to the, mil the U.S. military. It leaves out the fact that he worked with Himmler very closely during the war and was actually on the original list of Nuremberg war crimes trials. And yet, he was released into U.S. custody and came to the United States. So this idea that you can just whitewash someone's past, I think, is important to look into and to investigate so that that truth can be reconciled. All right. It comes to human rights. I'm against all human rights violations around the world. China Including is not the, the ones only in country. China? China is not the only country with human rights violations. Right, but do you condemn the genocide that's going on right now in China toward I the I condemn Uyghurs? all human rights violations. Why yes. can't you be specific? Yes. Because the way proclamations work in this country, the minute you say them anywhere, you're going to use this as a headline. Cuban says this, this, and this. What's then wrong with that headline? With Cuban condemns because, ethnic because cleansing in China. Because I got to deal with the troll bots then. Why would, why would the NBA take $500 million plus from a country that is engaging in ethnic cleansing? Why would... So basically, you're saying that no, nobody should do business with China ever. They are a customer. They're... They are a customer of ours, and guess what, Megan? I'm okay with doing business with China. Call on the banks to stop funding fossil fuel companies. Now, guys, we know Exxon Mobil has a $10 billion chemical facility they're building in China. We know MasterCard now is over in China. We know Morgan Stanley is now over in China. We know Goldman Sachs is now over in China. BlackRock now over in China, and American Express is now in China. Now, guys, we're supposed to be going against China. China is supposed to be our enemy. If that's the case, guys, all these companies are doing what? Committing treason. That's right, guys. That's right. 